and we're back. And wrapping up this episode, we are going to talk Action Comics, which a very weird, odd couple that we would never see. And we're going to talk about Wonder Woman, which another odd couple, frenemies, if I believe the proper <laughs> term is nowadays. They were pretty much my favorite all around with some good issues. This was These were my favorite stories this week. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I really enjoyed Action Comics, especially finding yeah. out just who Clark Kent is. Action Comics number 964. Superman Meet Clark Kent, Part 2. Well, Clark Kent, you know who he is? Seems to just be plain old Clark Kent. <laughs> that was so odd that... Uh, yeah. <laughs> this issue starts off with Superman taking Clark Kent to his Fortress of Solitude and getting, what was it, the Ball of Remembrance? Mm -hmm. Is that what the Sphere of Remembrance? And Clark Kent, pretty much his life story comes out which is very similar to the classic Superman Clark Kent stories, but with a couple of different key differences. One, he's not from Krypton. Two, he is an orphan as well. Mm -hmm. His parents died at a young age, and he was adopted by the Kents, and he went and was raised just like he, the regular Superman story is. But as later on, we see New 52 Superman saying that his life is in danger, so New 52 will take his place. And all the while, Superman is scanning him his, you know, for his physiology, finding out that it is Clark Kent, the DNA makeup, everything is the same as Superman, which is very odd. How could this be? We really don't know. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's so fun to see their interaction too because Clark Kent knows this Superman is a little bit older yes. than the Superman he claims to have met and mm -hmm. who, you know, who existed in that universe. And he, he doesn't know that, you know, this Clark, this Superman is Clark Kent. Right. Who can't tell him that he's Clark Kent because that would out himself. One of the thoughts I had was there is a possibility that the New 52 universe might have had just a human Clark Kent. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things I thought of was there is the antimatter universe. Yes. And in that, at least, I don't know if this is true for New 52 Ultraman, but the last Ultraman we saw in the comics, the Antimatter Universe Ultraman, was a human named Clark Kent. Okay. He was an astronaut and went up into space and ended up getting, um, you know, irradiated and came back with superpower. Sort of the, the reversal of Superman's origin, which okay. makes sense for a guy who's basically the evil Superman. But it kind of stands to reason if there was a human Clark Kent in that universe, there could very well be a human Clark Kent in the DC universe, in the mainstream DC universe. Oh, that's very true. It's far-fetched, but... Uh, anything <sighs> at this point. Yeah. You know, Superman is very conscious about not letting Clark Kent who know who he is. Even though he gets all the answers from Clark Kent, and the ones that we, he wasn't expecting, he's very cautious on not giving, showing his hand. Clark Kent knows there's, there's something going on, but in order, until this is all figured out, Superman gives Clark Kent a one his uh, trusty sidekick watch, just like he said, keep my enemies close, and my friends close, my enemies closer. Because he still doesn't know what to make of it, but until then, he's going to kind of take him as a, a person to be trusted. Yeah, yeah, and, and there isn't really anything else to, you know, hold against Clark. Mm -hmm. I mean, every every test Superman ran said he's basically who he says he is. Yes, it's just. Shocking for him and shocking for uh, shocking for readers too. Superman can't give out his identity because it exposes Jonathan and Lois. But I think he, it really is a dynamic. It, it just kind of the reporter in Clark Kent knows that something more is going on, but he's not asking too much of what's yeah. up. Um, the man with the red hat from last issue and this issue, a little bit more to him than what we see. He takes out uh, Gentricon kind of makes it disappear. Mm -hmm. Just as Superman and Clark Kent, oh, the, the memory of seeing that uh, Gentricon had something to do with Doomsday, that they were storing Doomsday and one other monster. They fly to that location and it's gone. Yeah. The man in the red hat had made it disappear. And then at the very end of the issue, we see the man in the red hat as, Super, as Clark Kent wrote an article about Superman saying that he is a Superman and he is a little bit older a little bit wiser, but he's still the Superman. And while we see that the man in the red hat is walking, 
goes to his apartment, and we see what appears to be Apocalypse with the Superman emblem, the S emblem, on his planet, and saying something about revenge. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's more to the man in the red hat than what meets the eye. Yeah, it makes me wonder if any of that has to do with uh, Luthor, mm -hmm. too, because Luthor was yeah. on Apocalypse for a while. He's mm -hmm. kind of considering himself Superman. He might have just created a big giant S on the planet, so... Who knows? This will be mm -hmm. interesting because the man in the red hat made a building disappear from what looked like just a single little, yep. you know, bomb type device on it. So, wow! And and what what was Genetron doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, were they did they have something to do with Clark Kent? That's the only other explanation I can think of is maybe he's some sort of clone, right? Or something agreed. like a human clone of just just the human side, not the mm -hmm. uh, the Kryptonian side. Well, let's. This is a pretty straightforward issue, not really much discussion in terms of we get a lot of answers from Clark Kent, maybe not the answers everyone's looking for, but answers for the time, and setting up a new story arc with some people from Apocalypse coming back for Superman, or maybe Lex Luthor. We will find out. Wonder Woman number seven, The Lies part four. Wonder Woman number seven, Give us a rundown on what appears to be the final story in this arc. Well, we finally figure out that Urskataga has supposedly up to this point needed women. Kadulo had been kidnapping, kidnapping uh, girls from these villages, sending them off. I think, I mean, I'm sure we assumed it was probably sacrificing. Yes. You know, that's, that's the kind of thing you think of when you have a, a mm -hmm. guy who wants to turn himself into the avatar for a giant evil plant deity whose name we can barely spell. Right. And in this it turns out the women are actually Urs Kartaga's wardens as yes. Wonder Woman puts it. And they're, they're what can stop Urs Kartaga. And that's sort of why one of the reasons why Urs Kartaga is so malicious towards women I think. That, yes. That's sort of what she seems to imply. Because Wonder Woman figures that out from just talking to Cheetah. From talking to Cheetah and from you know putting two and two together elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, Cheetah was his bride for a while, yep. and yet she really probably had more power over him than he really wanted her to know about. So it's a very complicated relationship, but it's kind of a fitting end for uh, Urskartaga in this. Mm -hmm. That the you know the thing that seems to hate women and demean women that much gets taken out by a, exactly. you know, a group of them with the lasso. Oh, geez. After he's taken out and all the kids and the women play a part of it, we see Cheetah, Barbara Ann seems to be back to normal. And she's very scarred, I think, physically and emotionally, psychologically, from her time as that Cheetah deity. Whew, man, I just, wow, that was rough. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens, what happens to Barbara Ann Minerva mm -hmm. at this point. I mean, you know, part of her agreement with Wonder Woman was to help her find Themyscira at right. this point. Is she even going to have the energy to do that? Mm -hmm. Is she going to be a recurring character in the comic after that? Um, is there going to be a new Cheetah at some point? Because in the classic comics, we had at least four, by my count. Mm -hmm. You know, Barbara Ann just being one of them. Uh, we even had a male Cheetah at one point. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. And where's Kadulo? He looked like he was out for the count. Yeah. Was uh, Urs Kataga trying to merge with Kadulo as well? That was, looked... that was what I got was... I, was tr I couldn't really understand why. It looked like Steve Trevor was there for the sacrifice, and mm -hmm. then that would bring Urs Kartaga into Kadulo. Yep. But, of course, that stopped in there, and, and Cheetah was going to kill Kadulo, but then just mm -hmm. backhanded him. But that, I will say, whenever I see a crack sound in mm -hmm. a comic, that usually means that got snapped. But yes. I, I don't know. Who knows? It might have just been a different choice. But I've seen mm -hmm. crack enough to know, oh, neck snapped. Steve and Diana, they have a great bond. You can tell it. And we've seen it year one, and we've also seen it here. They, there, there is something special with these two characters. Yeah, I, I love how they don't even need to catch up. They don't even right. they don't need a, a sit rep or anything. Mm -hmm. They just they say, Steve, Diana, <laughs> here right. we go. I mean, it, and that's even the same bond she has with his comrades. Mm -hmm. I mean, she knows all of them by name. Exactly. It's, they have that same relationship. She's just, she's just one of the guys. Yes, the it's, supporting cast of... Wonder Woman seems very strong, very well connected, and we're seeing that 
with this year one back and forth, how the present, the past, they're intersecting. And she just really, almost like an optimist, even when she was with Barbara Ann, she didn't give up on her. Mm -hmm. In this iteration, she hasn't given up on her. And I think that's pretty unique. Yeah, yeah, and it, it'll be interesting to see if in the flashback series we get to see how that bond is formed. Because mm -hmm. that's a very tight bond. I mean, they're, they're really in sync with one another. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how that forms and where that goes. Mm -hmm. Do you think we've seen the end of Earth's Gataga? I mean, it's an evil plant god. I mean, gods very rarely die and stay dead in right. comics. So we'll see. He seemed to know a little bit about Wonder Woman as well. Yeah. That's been a theme of everyone knows more about Wonder Woman <laughs> than she does. Yeah, yeah. It, and it kind of makes you wonder, gee, Diana, maybe you could have, you know, shaken some answers out of him before mm -hmm. you turned him into a little right. plant petal after that. But <laughs> yeah, a little rose bringing yeah. up. Yeah, who knows? We'll, we'll see. And it'll be interesting to see what those answers are and if, if Cheetah can even help her mm -hmm. find those answers. Because she'd be one of the few that they established in the, the flashback comics who could really right. help her do that. We, next issue, I believe Wonder Woman is the year one interlude with Barbara Ann where mm -hmm. it's more of her story. And then we get back to the back and forth. Uh, Wonder Woman is this, the 75th uh, anniversary of Wonder Woman. And we're going to talk about the movie uh, trailer here in another episode and the 75th uh, anniversary edition of the Wonder Woman comic that uh, we had on here uh, last episode, the cover, mm -hmm. very thick. There's a lot planned for Wonder Woman. Uh, this yeah. year going forward and next year we had the post office bringing out their Wonder Woman stamps, commemorative mm -hmm. stamps. There's a lot going on with Wonder Woman. I think the end of this year, really next year is going to be the year of Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is, um, sounds like it's really the third member of the Trinity mm -hmm. getting her, uh, you know, her time in the spotlight. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Great series, Wonder Woman. I, I love the interaction of back and forth, back and forth with the characters. They're just doing, everything's clicking with that title. Uh, that pretty much wraps up this episode of Comic Book Cove. Any thoughts uh, going forward on anything, you know, what we're, you're looking forward to in the next few issues ahead? Well, definitely looking forward to seeing if they can do any more odd couples. Right. This, I mean, because it is, it is fun to have that happen, you know, when you press two very different characters up against one another and, and see how they react. And I, yes. I don't think all of these odd couples will stay together for some of it. Some of them, I mean, we'll see if Godspeed even survives this story arc. Right. But um, it'll be interesting to see what else we get in DC Rebirth of those odd couples. Definitely. So, yeah. DC, young, odd, all the way around. Well, if you have any comments or any questions or want to discuss any comics we reviewed, drop us a line at our YouTube and Facebook site, Delve Into the Void. So until next time, I'm Tom Morris. And I'm Josh Holderman. We'll see you next episode of Comic Book Cove.